today I'm going to make a monogram canvas. So it's going to have flowers. And my first initial is P. And this is kind of um, just a reference for me to look at when I get to that part. This is a 12 by 12 wrapped canvas, like one of those inexpensive ones you can get in a value pack at Michael's or Joann's or, <clears throat> or online. So I'm using multi-surface paint today. Uh, this is two folk art colors, thicket and um, citrus green. And I'm using my low Cornell white nylon two inch brush. I like these for putting on backgrounds and, and painting my signs and what have you. They really come in handy. Now this is like a springy feel sign. So I wanted the greens and I'm just going to cover my canvas. I'm just going to slip slap it on the two colors kind of blending and I will make sure I get the edges. I'm not too careful because this is, like I said, going to be the background, not the focal point. And I got that edge and come around this side. Don't blend it in too much. You want some of the movement. Going back to my palette here, reload. Getting plenty of paint on. I'm doing the edge here. And I'll do this edge. Sorry if I'm out of the camera, but I'm just getting it along the edge. And since I'm holding the back with my bottom with my hand, I'll come back in and get that later. More paint, lots of paint, get it on there, slip slap it on. I'm almost out of paint on my palette, so I have to reload some more. I might get the last of this out of here. I just want to make sure it's all covered. The middle. Okay, and there we have it. And I'll lift up the end and work this on it. the edge. And I might have to fix upper edge not too bad not too bad at all now if I want to lighten it up a little I'll just put some more of that bright green in and touch it up and I think that'll do I'm gonna let this dry I'll get my hair dryer or something and dry it and then we'll be back for more I thought before I went ahead and dried it I put more of the citrus green on my palette because I wanted kind of the center to be a little bit brighter so I'm going to just put that in the center slap it in there and it kind of highlights that center part try not to overwork it because then the dark green kind of takes back over and that kind of gives that center some brightness that I'm looking for okay now I will dry it as you can see here I have kind of sketched out with chalk white chalk uh, a P and this is going to be the letter I do my flowers on. And I've drawn some little circles of where I want my roses and kind of where I want other things. I'm not sure how it's going to turn out because this is my first time doing this. So we'll see how the design comes out. I like working in odd numbers, um, but we'll see how the placement of those roses will work with the other flowers. And I'm just going to be winging it along the way here to see how this looks at the end. But right now, I am going to undercoat the roses with white because on a dark surface, um, to make them, the colors brighter, white is a better background than the green because the green um, will dull the colors. And I want my colors on this to be very bright. So it's going to be spring-like and bright and cheerful. I'm not too careful. Some of these are going to go over the edges. This isn't going to be precisely inside of the letter. We're going to be just roundabout and give the indication of the letter with the flowers. So there I have based in my white. 
for for that. So we will let that dry. In the meantime, I am going to paint the leaves for the roses because the roses will go over top. Now let me get my palette set and my brushes for that and I will be right back. Now I have the, let's see, this color is Thicket. And then there's the citrus green for the leaves. So I have it double loaded on my palette. This is a number eight. This is a Royal Majestic brush, but a number eight flat in Donna Dewberry or others um, will work too. I have another set here that I am looking to test that I got at Michael's, uh, an economy set, but I haven't really tested it yet, so I can't really recommend it. But um, you can try them and see how they work for you. Now here I'm going to do a leaf. This rose is going to come over this leaf. So I'm going to just kind of, I got into too much of that white. I may have to wait a bit or make sure I come up here. Did my scallop leaf. I'm kind of doing this stretching rather than getting as close as I would so I don't get in the camera. And maybe this one will be better for you. I'm just kind of wiggling it as I go up. These aren't what rose leaves really look like. These are just a leaf. So I do some kind of leaves that are more indication of, not indication, well, kind of like, let me do them here. Rose leaves grow like five on a, on a stem. And I do the one stroke leaf. You notice I'm not starting flat. I kind of start at an angle and then go up. And that prevents the bottoms from being too flat. And it kind of gives them a rounded shape. Now that leaf might get covered by other flowers, but I just wanted to kind of show you how I do some of the rose leaves. And a lot of times I'll do it um, with some of the color of the rose in it so that it goes into the um, leaves. I was just thinking there for a minute. I black, blanked out. I was thinking maybe I should do the whole P in white, but I thought, no, I don't. I want some of that background color in there. So let's see. Let's turn it this way. And I'll do a leaf right here. And I will just continue adding some leaves. Some of these may get um, colored over from other flowers. And if I need to, I can come back in and do more. But I like these ones next to the rose to be under the rose. So I do them first. Then when I do the rose, it kind of overlaps them and it makes them, sets them to the back. Now this one didn't have very much dark green in it. So I'll do that. And I can come here and do like the five leaf. I squished that one a little too hard so I have too much paint, but it gives it texture. Let me drag in some veins. And you can kind of see how it's going to come together. You start playing with it, and the beauty of it, if you don't like something, you block it out and you go over it. And I can kind of do some vines with leaves. I could add um, some flowers to that vine, so it could be a uh, morning glory or and it's just a faux vine. And we'll come back and add some more here in a bit. My battery's dying, so I'm going to just change it out. Here on the bottom, I have a couple of yellow dots because I'm going to do some daisies here and I wanted a point for them to come to. So, but first I know I'm going to put like some spiky flowers here, like a Arc spur, delphinium type. So I wanted the stems in there first. And I'm using the brighter color. I didn't put in any of the dark. I guess I could try to get some in there for a little variation. 
and we'll do leave that there. I'm pinching out my brush. Oh, I probably should rinse it. This one is a little bit smaller than the other one. This one is a number six plaid one stroke brush. Get it dried out because white paint has a tendency not to be completely opaque, especially if it's wet. So I just have white on my brush. And even though this is a flat brush, we can get kind of a rounded edge. And I'm just going to come in. I'm on the chisel edge of the brush and I'm coming to that center spot. And then we can just do a couple side stroke. Now that dot is just a reference point. I'm going to make the center a little bit larger. Getting a little more paint on my palette and it doesn't matter if we overlap. Now if you wanted some contrast color in there you could add some gray to give it some definition or you could even undercoat with a gray and then go over and then a couple like that. Now I'd hope I should have come down further so also another way you can do a daisy I guess I'm getting it too gloppy here, is I could have went all the way around and made the daisies. And maybe that'll work better because I didn't put it close enough to the bottom. And there you have it. And like I said, I'm going to come in and make a darker center there. I'm going to, and you can not, you don't have to do yellow for your center dot. You can do um, a white one. All I think I will put a daisy here. And I'm just going to do the same side load or side, or side chisel edge and bring those strokes in. Now if you want to do like a partial daisy or a daisy that's kind of um, just the top part and the center's right there. Now I will come back over these because they're not quite opaque. So right now that's basically the undercoat of those daisies. Let's see, I can put another one. I'm thinking I have some of the blue there. I guess I can have one right here. Do the dot if it makes you feel better. You don't have to. Like I said, I'm not staying exactly inside the lines of the P. And I'm just looking to see if I want any others anywhere else or some like little small white flowers. I can do some little five stroke flowers and that's more on the flat edge of the brush. I'm pushing, lifting and twisting to a point. And then I'll dot that center and it says this is going to be pink or a pink and a fuchsia. Then these white flowers will be nice next to it. I have to decide, you know, if I want to fill in there with a leaf or more flowers, I could do another of these or I could do like yellow. You have to see what's going to go good against the pink. And I think that works for now. I want to wait until I see with the blue what I want in there because that's going to be the blue larkspur type flowers and just you kind of work it until you filled it in without making it too busy. Well, I don't know if you really can make this not too busy, but we'll give it a whirl anyways. I will let this dry and come back and do some centers. Well, after saying I was going to come in and do centers, I changed my mind while that's drying. I can be doing my roses. Now I have to decide which way I want my roses to face. I think I want this one facing upward and this one I want facing this way. This one I think, so they're all kind of facing different directions. Now I have a, this is uh, Americana Baby Pink and Royal Fuchsia because they're, they're, 
baby pink's not real bright, but that royal fuchsia is. And I'm double loading my number 10 brush. I'm going back to that number 10. I think low, oh, this is royal majestic. I think they call these brights. I'm not sure if this is a bright. Let me see, what's the series number? I can't read it, so sorry, royal majestic. I do link to a source online, but you could also use a one stroke brush if that's what you have or the size, you can make this larger, so you could, you know, fit the size to your project. Now, since I want this pointing up, I'm going to start with the bowl. I hope this brush isn't going to be too big. I could go back to the other, the number six. I have a harder time with smaller roses than I do larger ones. So I'm just layering my strokes. I've got Oh, there's a little bit of white showing there. And I do the bowl first, come bring down the tails. I'll fill in the center. I want this to be an open bowl with the magenta or fuchsia, whatever it is. And I'm loading each time. I have to be careful not to get the colors into each other. And I keep layering the strokes along the way. I got those done, so now I'll come and finish off the bowl. Now, if you want a little more contrast on your bowl, you dip um, the light pink into some white, and then you can get a little more contrast there. Just blend it in, but that way you're getting a visible stroke. Now, here's the second layer come down and I go down. I don't go all the way across and then you're overlapping those strokes there. So it looks like two petals coming over each other. Then I go back and I'm going to lose a little bit of my contrast. So I'm going to get a little white and work it in. Do the second layer of what I call the armchair arm strokes. Sorry my hair keeps falling over. I should have put it in ponytail. My microphone. Hopefully I don't have to scrap this whole video because I kept getting my hair in the way. Now I'm going to do the bottom petals and I just kind of do a scallop. If it helps, turn your surface. And oh, I need to do another layer of the arms beneath that other one. And then I will do what I call a tricky stroke where I come along between, flip my brush, and come up under in the next. And if you need to, add a few chisel strokes here and there. And there you have your rose. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Okay, I'm going to pause, get me a drink so I don't cough into your ear, and I'll work on the other two roses. Well, I changed my mind again. I am going to do these blue flowers here before I do this rose because it's going to kind of come over top. And what I have here is True Blue, Folk Art, Americana True Blue, and Folk Art Multi-Surface, Look at Me Blue. And I'm going to just double load and work my brush into it. And you always lead with the or you have the lead with the lighter color, that way the darker color won't over swamp, will not swamp it. Okay, now I'm just gonna work down the stem with these blue spiky flowers. And you can make it, oh, sorry about that. Moved my microphone and didn't put it back on. Like I said, I'm just double loading the paintbrush and working my way down. Now I can make it a little fuller at the bottom. And I keep reloading the dark and the light. And just stroke in these spiky flowers. I don't know if you had noticed, but I had put 
of the lighter green stem there. And that works and I, I may come back in and put like a highlight on the tip. And this way I think I'll switch the brush and I'll go against the green and I'll have the lighter blue on the top. And I'll do these ones down here. Now when you weren't looking, I had added these because I, I, I knew I was going to need some of the pink down here. So these are rosebuds and here I'll just, oops, I went the wrong way. I want the lighter on the top on these. So I'll just go back. And that kind of fills in there and then I wanted some right there. Like I said, I'm trying to do these in odd numbers. I'm not minding going over the other flower. That one didn't have a stem drawn in, but I did it anyways because I wanted one there. And if I want, I can come back and do that leaf so it overlays those flowers, or I can leave it where the flower goes over the leaf. And <clears throat> I might want to add just some right here, even though it's not it's not an odd number, but that's very little there. So I haven't figured out what I want to put here or what color. So we'll come back to that later and um, I will clean out my brush and we'll do another rose. So here we are. Let me focus. Back we're going to do this rose and remember I wanted it pointing that way. So I'm back to the pink and the fuchsia. Baby pink and the fuchsia colors. Double loading my number eight brush. Get it? No, oh, not enough fuchsia in there. Okay, so we'll go this direction. Top of it, bring it down, bring it down. Reload. Double loading my brush in case you need to see how I'm doing that. Dip, dip, stroke it on there. Get Plenty of paint on my brush. I don't know. Let's see if I have enough paint in my brush. Yeah, I can do one side arm. One side arm. Now, I should have gone over that with a little white. And I still may, just because I don't want... Well, we'll see. We'll see if that gives it the shadows. But normally, I'll go over the leaf part again with white so that the pink will um, be brighter. And I'm just doing my typical layers. Maybe I'll come down here and do these bottom ones before I do that second layer of arms. And I'll do this finish off the center. Well, this time maybe I'll want it to be a little cl more closed, so I'll do that. Touch a little of the fuchsia in there. Reload. Maybe get a touch of white on the baby pink. And then come and close off the bowl. And then I'll grab these tails and it doesn't always have to overlap in the center. You can do it off to one side. And the third one. Now I'm going to go out and do the second layer of arms. And it comes, you see, it comes right across that. And I need a touch of white in my baby pink because I'm losing some of my definition there. 
And on this one, I'm not going to bother with the tricky stroke, as I call it. I'm just going to get a touch of white onto my brush, and I'm just going to bring in some chisel strokes. And I'm losing my chisel edge, so I need to go and rinse out my brush. And I notice there's a little speck of white showing there, so I'm going to try and... And that's fine. There you go. It's a little different shaped, odd shape there, but that's not every rose is the same. I am going to pinch out my brush, I think. Well, I'll rinse it and then pinch it. It doesn't have to be completely clean because I'm going back in the same colors. It's just that um, there was getting to be a lot of paint up in the ferrules. And I want to do these two buds. Same colors, the fuchsia and the light pink. And I'm going to do the buds. You do upside down U stroke. I don't have enough fuchsia in there. Upside down U stroke. And then right side up U stroke. Doesn't matter if I do two strokes. Upside down U stroke. Again, not enough fuchsia because you need it for the contrast. And this time I'll even dip the light pink in a bit of white to get more color contrast. Then I'll come back and do the green little <clears throat> calyxes and what have you. Now we're going to figure out, yep, those daisies are done. Well, I'm going to go ahead and finish this rose. And I remember I wanted it pointed that way. And that green of that leaf isn't into the rose enough to make a difference. So I'm going to And I'm running out of pink, light baby pink on my palette. So I need to get some more here in a minute. I'm just gonna try to clean my brush out a bit there. Getting those strokes put on there. Okay, I'm gonna give me a touch more baby pink. Now this, I'm going to fill in a little bit. I'm going to make this a wide bowl again, wide bowl rose, rather than another layer of petals. Getting a little white, and I'm going to come, and I don't make it always straight. I kind of wiggle it sometimes. And the next layer, you can come all the way around, or you can kind of come around and down, and I'm losing my definition of that one, so I get some white. Okay, and then I'll do the second layer of the arm strokes. Need more white. And this one does need that defining Tricky stroke. Get white with the pink again. I'm going to come between these petals, flip, and come up underneath those petals, and then just add. I need to stroke my brush and then get it chisel edgy again. And there is your third rose. You see how it's all starting to come together? Well, it looks like there's a spot up there that's going to need some thing. So maybe I'll put another rosebud up there. I know I went over that leaf, and you'll notice I put some little dot flowers in. I may do that over here, but I wanted to put something in along the edges to kind of define more of it. I'm kind of moving it or trying to look. I could do something right there, maybe some of the blue. I don't have any yellow, and I'm not sure, other than the centers of the daisies, if I want a lot of yellow in this. But um, we could give it a go. If I don't like it, the next one, I won't do it. Okay. I will get 
a liner brush and I will do the calyxes on the rose pet I mean rose buds okay I have loaded a number two script liner this is a Donna Dewberry or Dewberry U Pro uh, I will confess that I'm pretty lousy with a lot of liners and to get really skinny lines I really need to go to a smaller like a zero but um, this is what I had handy so I'm going to be very careful to put the calyxes on they're not showing out because I'm doing the light green but it will be fine and do a little dot there a couple little and a line see I did put a drip of water in my paint to make it a little more inky to make it easier I flatten and come to a point for that one and I put a dot at the base and I add these two little dots and I'm trying to figure out how to define this edge if I can do some scrollies I guess and even along here do some scrollies need to get my tip pointy still haven't figured out what I'm going to do there we will see more scrollies hmm. now with the white, the white little dots I got here on these leaves and whatever I can put between these to kind of make it uniform. I did that just with the corner of my brush. Let me see, I dipped it in white. This one missed back to the number six, plaid number six, one stroke brush. And I just put it in like a few dots that has a touch of pink in it, but that's okay. It blends. So I could do that over here, just a few dots. I got those two close together. I don't know if those need any dots, if that has any. But you kind of get the picture of what's going on there. It's coming together slowly. Still need to figure out little spots that look a little bare, like here and here. And I'll put the centers in. Let's get our yellow. And I guess since I'm trying to limit my brush, sometimes I use a scruffy brush, the little scruffy brush that comes in some of these sets. But I'm just going to use the tip of my, not the tip, the corner. And I'm kind of making a circle in the center. Just tapping it in there with the corner of my brush. This one up here, be careful not to get your arm, which I do a lot in your other. This one, the white needs to be made more opaque, so maybe I'll leave that a bit. This one, make it a dome. These white flowers here, instead of a yellow center, I think I'm just going to go ahead, I will touch that liner into that green again and just dot them with the green. Now I can come back with a brown. It could be burnt or raw sienna. Maybe raw sienna would be the better color. And I don't see one quite handy here. I have burnt umber, so maybe I'll just do the burnt umber on the daisies. What I will do I dipped my liner, I just dip it right in there, and I will come along the bottom, just add some little dots along the bottom of the daisy center. All right, I gotta fix that one yet. And if you wanna highlight the top, you can. And you can do that with a touch of white Just gives it a little spark. But a lot of these need the white going over 
to make it opaque on top of that green background. So I'll get my, I need some clean white because I got pink in the white that I have on my palette. Whoops, sorry, dropped my thing. Alrighty, loading up my brush, adding another layer of white to make it opaque. Now what would have been good would have been to undercoat these with a gray and um, that would have blocked out that green a little bit more and added that color. Now these I'm just going to put a little stripe in since they've already done a center, but I'm just giving that center part a little more opacity. This one I can go ahead and do If ever you think, oh, she's changed how she did her brush stroke. Yep, I do that a lot. So it just shows you how versatile you could be. We got a little yellow in that, but that works. And now I can go underneath that part of that one and have it be a little darker there with the burnt umber. I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do there. I just can't think. I guess I could just put a leaf. More and more white flowers. I could do some of these white flowers there. Or I could do some of the blue. Maybe I like the blue. Do a little bit of the blue. Give it a little more spark. So just do... Does that even it out? Now it looks like there's not enough over here, but I can add a little bit of blue over here somewhere. It could be coming this way instead of these dots. Or with the dots. That works. Okay, forgot to do the calyx on that bud. But you get the picture. You see how it's coming together? And you have your monogram. And you can do this with any color, um, letter. I uh, just basically had printed that out on my printer to give me an idea. I wanted the fat letter so that I could have something to work with. And I will primp on this a little more and then share the final result. I decided it needed some lavender or purple and I pulled out my lavender multi-surface folk art color um, and I dipped my brush in it and I made almost tulip shaped type flowers. I'll do one right here and all I did was touch, press, touch, press, touch, press and it makes that. Now if you wanted to find some of it then I touch the other side in white and you see I did one there. That one had a little more white in it, but I will put one somewhere along here, maybe on top of this leaf, I'll put another one. Now I'm going, remember, in kind of a tulip shape, so if you want to draw it on, and you can do that. And that purple, that lavender, I think to make it brighter, I would have undercoated with white, um, but maybe that touch of purple in there will just help it a bit and I'm thinking all is pretty good here. Maybe some purple right up there would help. And I know I'm going against my scheme of, let me see, one, two, three, four, well yeah that is five. And you could do a stem from it. I'm kind of going over the leaves, but the leaves really did blend in a lot more than um, I would have liked, but that's because the background color is that green. But there is the monogram. I think I like it better now with the purple in it. I well, better not overdo, but maybe some purple here some way. Mm. I know, I keep saying not overdo, and then I do another one. That's okay. 
Excuse my stomach if you heard that. A little white on the corner because it's just not showing up the definition of the petals. There we go. And if I got any green on my palette. And that doesn't need a stem. Okay. If you think you need anything else, then add it. Thank you for watching my video, as goofy as it was.